In this video, I'm gonna play some of the best holes here at Pebble Beach to give you a virtual playing lesson so you can think like a plus handicap. Don't forget, there's a lot we can do to play better golf, and it doesn't always have to do with just spending more time at the simulator or the range working on a perfect swing. There's a lot of stuff we have to do in terms of course management. So today, I'm gonna to take you through some of the best holes out here. I had a chance to play here in 2016, so I'm actually gonna show some videos from that day I was out there, kind of walk you through what to do on the first tee, how to adapt to different lies, and a lot of other course management strategies that you can put into practice today to start shooting lower scores fast. So I'm not gonna take you through putting on this thing because putting on a simulator is kind of pointless. But again, I think if you watch through the end, you're gonna learn a lot of tips to think your way around the golf course better. Don't forget, there's so much more we can do than just work on a perfect swing at the driving range or the simulator. We have to learn how to manage our game from tee to green and you're gonna shoot lower scores fast. All right, so before getting into some of the picturesque holes, let's talk about the first tee shot because the first tee shot obviously is a very scary shot for a lot of players and one that I definitely have some experience with as well. So looking back in my own career, I had one of the worst first tee shots of all time during my college tryout. I dead topped my shot in front of the coach and all the players on the team on that first tee right into a creek. Went on to make like a triple or maybe even a quad. I can't even remember, I blacked it out but I ended up playing on that team after doing a, a very, very challenging tryout uh, about a year later. So needless to say, I know what it's like to hit really bad first tee shots, but I've also hit some really good ones. And in my book, Wicked Smart Golf, I actually talk about what we need to do to reframe our first tee jitters as excitement. So I'm not sure if you know, but excitement and nerves have the exact same response in your body. Your heart's gonna get beating a little bit faster, your hands might get a little sweaty. The problem is though, is that when we're nervous, we're saying to ourselves, I'm nervous, I'm nervous, I'm nervous. When we're excited though, we're saying, I'm excited, I'm excited, I'm excited about this opportunity. So that's the first thing you always wanna do on that first tee shot is just get excited about the opportunity. That's why you play, that's why you practice, that's why you work hard. So have the right mindset heading into it. Also, you wanna make sure to warm up if you can, that way you're not hitting the first shot of the day on the first tee and always end that driving range session with the first tee shot in mind. So using the club, imagining your target, going through your full pre-shot routine. So the biggest thing to remember with the first tee is to make sure you have a good pre-shot routine and stick with it. So you wanna do it behind the golf ball. I'm a little restricted on space, but I took my practice wings, I picked my target, take a big deep breath, walk into the shot, I make sure the club is aligned to where my target is, build my stance, look up at the target while waggling, and then as soon as my head goes back, I go. Ooh, that was pretty good. Get past that tree. Barely. The next hole that I think you guys will really like here is number six at Pebble Beach. It's one of my favorite holes. Honestly, might be my favorite hole. I hit a pretty great shot. I'll show you just in a second when I played there. Good miss. Well, that narrows out a lot. 310, wow. Did not hit that very good, but somehow it worked out. All right, gotta aim a little further left. Ooh, that was hit well. Stay out of that bunker. Stay out of that. Oh, that would be an awful shot. So I kind of have the tiger shot that he hit back in the day. Although this is a downhill lie hitting uphill. This is not an easy shot. But if you're playing Pebble Beach, you of course have to go for it. <laughs> As you can tell, that cliff is uh, pretty steep here. I think a six iron still should make it over it. So again, I'm trying to get just a little more of my weight forward lately. I feel like I'm starting off too far back here. So I'm just trying to get a little bit of weight. Ooh, that could be really good. Oh yeah. Well, this is definitely not a shot I would ever try to hit, but let's give it a whirl. The sand, let's say it's sitting up in the sand here. It's about as good as we're gonna get. Definitely not the wicked smart play here. Oh, but he did it. Oh, but he did it. Go, go. I'd be so thrilled if I did that in real life. All right, so next up is the iconic 
Uh, seventh hole, what is it, 104, 48 feet downhill. When I played, it was very good. Well, it wasn't like bad weather, but it was a little foggy. I hit a little sand wedge, it was on the front, the pin was in the front, missed the putt, but it was like a little fringe putt, about 15 feet, missed it, but made par. I mean, this hole's crazy if you get wind. So what I try and do here, because if I hit a hard lob wedge, it's gonna spin too much, and I try to not hit a lot of hard wedges in general. So I'm gonna try and hit more like a little knocky uh, sand wedge that like hits, skips, and stops. Um, it's It might spin back still a little bit. I don't know, we'll see. I've got four attempts here that we're gonna try and do. But one thing I really encourage everybody to do is to get comfortable with multiple wedge distances. So I have, of course, my full swing. I have kind of a shoulder where I feel like my left hand is at the top of my shoulder. I have a left hand at my rib cage. I have a left hand down here at my hip and then a left hand down here, at least with lob wedge. But with like pitching wedge and, and uh, gap wedge and even sand have at least two or three distances. So for me, a full sand wedge is like 115. So I would choke up on this one about an inch, inch and a half, and then I will try and take it back to about here and then have a little follow through. So let's see what we can do. Gonna go a little bit of a narrow stance as well, just kind of restricts my swing from being too long and feel my weight just a little forward. I didn't hit that good though. That would be so disappointing, just plugged in the left part of the bunker. All right, but we got four attempts, if only. All right, so let's, I, I think I just took too much off there, so we'll try and speed it up. Ooh, that could be good. Not bad, yeah, it kind of hit and stopped, so it's gotta hit just a little before it, I think, to get this close. Again, for me with wedges, as I mentioned in my book, I like to think weight forward. So maybe not that far, but like this is 50-50. So I like to just get a little bit because I've definitely been, my old habit is to be like this. And then you're hitting up on the golf ball and a lot of thin shots. So try to get the weight forward. Nice little knocky sand. Oh, I hit it a little good. Nope, that's pin high, that's a good one. I'd absolutely take that, conceited birdie. Wicked smart approve. One more attempt. Again, weight forward, a little knocky. Oh, be good. Oh, two of four pretty good. The first one was awful, but that's golf. All right, so next up is the eighth hole. The eighth hole at Pebble is honestly one of the hardest holes on the course. It's so tough on the tee up because you can't see anything uh, fairway wise. It's a little wider than it looks, but you can only hit like 225, 230. Then the second shot's like uphill, over water, between bunkers, very tough green. I missed left on the green and as I'll show you, not the way to go. So it's not an easy shot, but I'd say the biggest thing to remember with shots where you can't see the fairway is to still get really clear about some sort of target in the distance. So on this hole, for example, I would focus on that left side of the house. So even if you can't see it, I think giving your mind a lot of clarity on where we want the ball to go is one of the most important things in golf. Too many people are saying, don't hit it in the water, don't hit it left, and, and our mind does not do well with negative statements like that. So let's clarify and say, hey, I wanna hit this at the left side of that house at 210 yards. So I got five iron, let's see what we can do. Pretty solid, I might've hit it too good. No, it should be good. So I hit a good good uh, five iron here. I still have 182. This is one of the hardest shots. This is actually the hole where Jordan Spieth almost lost his life. Props for him for hitting that shot that was so close to the edge of the cliff. Absolute uh, champ for, for what he did there. So I missed this green on the left side. It leaves an impossible up and down. I mean, you are just chipping straight down. The rough's kind of thick. It's just an awful spot. So it's not an easy shot to begin with. 185, probably in real life would be a seven iron for me. If there was any wind or cold, it could be a six, but in this simulator here, probably gonna be a full eight. Missing short is better than long on this hole too. So really clear about my target, pretty much middle of the green here, which happens to be where the flag is.
Oh, I hit it too good. Can't be mad about that when you hit it too pure, I guess. All right, so next up is the ninth hole. One of my favorite holes on the course. It's so good. I mean, it's a really solid par four. The second shot is very difficult. Fairway is pretty forgiving. It looks like that cliff and the water is coming in a lot more than it is. Um, but I would say just one of the biggest thing with tee shots in general is just to play one shot shape. So I play a fade all the time. I just don't even try. Well, I used to try and hit draws and fades and it just never worked well. So I learned that from Decade Golf. Uh, the creator, Scott Fawcett, has been on the podcast a couple times. And ever since I started using the Decade approach in 2022 and switched to just one shot shape 99% of the time um, and 100% of the time with driver, it just makes it easier to pick targets. Because if you're trying to hit draws and fades, you know, you're picking different targets, you're inviting that double cross into it, which is gonna lead to some big misses. And uh, a lot of times you're just playing golf swing versus playing golf. So for me, again, I just take my fade, I'm always starting it pretty much up the left or left center, depending on what the hole looks like. Um, same thing with this one, I'm getting really clear on my target, always doing it behind the golf ball in the full swing so that way we can kind of visualize it. And we're always trying to separate where we, you know, the, I believe it's uh, Lynn and Pia from Vision 54 talk about the think box and the play box. So if we do our thinking back here, then we can play up here without having too much conscious thought. Because again, to play our best golf, we got to go unconscious. We got to just let it happen. That's why you work so hard at the range. That's why you grind. So you can trust it on the golf course. So again, I'd be back here. I'm thinking, you know, just pretty much a little right of that tree. Trying to pick my zone and go. That was pretty well struck, maybe a little push, but the fairway goes that way. That's actually very similar to where I was when I played in 2016. All right, we're gonna try and really hit one. Let's just see what happens. Ooh, sometimes you gotta get after it a little bit. That carried almost 300. That was hit pretty well. 320, 113 club head speed. Yeah, I mean, this obviously is downhill too. So we'll try one more, just in case. We got a little extra in the tank. Pretty good. Sometimes you just gotta let it go. I feel like one of the things I talk about in my book too is stop trying to guide shots, especially when they feel like tight holes and you got trouble and stuff, just swing harder. Uh, maybe not swing harder, but swing like you normally do. Commit to your target, commit to your routine, and you're probably gonna hit a lot better shot. So this was my first drive. This was 150 in here. Kind of a, a little bit of a hanging lie. You really don't need to do much on these ones. Um, you know, if the ball's above it, you need to choke up. But if it's down, I just try and keep my normal grip and just make sure I have a little bit more, a uh, little less knee, uh, excuse me, a little more knee bend. So I wouldn't really do too much different here though. Again, front center is a great shot, smooth wedge. Just pulled it again. All right, so this was another one. Again, we were thinking weight forward, swing with the slope. Yep, that's about, what, 35 feet? That's honestly a pretty much PGA Tour average from there. That's really all you want. 